In today's conversation, we discuss personal magnetism and charisma. The word charisma derives from the Greek word charis, which means gift or favor. The word charis inspired the sociologist Max Weber and gave us our modern-day understanding of the word charisma. He was inspired by Prophet Muhammad, Moses, and Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ gave us the key when he said, the kingdom of God is within you. And that's what I would like to further discuss with you today. Thus, I title today's conversation mind map, From the Inner Fulfillment of Truth. Today we're speaking of authentic personal magnetism and authentic charisma, which is a visible appearance of true self-expression, which spawns from true self-acceptance. I like how William Walker Atkinson said it one time. He said, the best suggestionists are those who have acquired the suggestive manner, which is developed by the exercise of authoritative utterances, the physical appearance, manner, and tones arising from a reflection of the mental state within. So, in the context of our conversation today, authentic personal magnetism and charisma arise naturally from the ideal state of consciousness, which manifests as authoritative utterances, physical appearance, manner, and tones, more so each day, and that is the exercise, which is the embodiment, which manifests as, again, authoritative utterances, physical appearance, manner, and tones. In other words, as the individual realizes the true self, true self-acceptance, they embody the ideal state of consciousness from which authoritative utterances, physical appearances, manner, and tones naturally arise and are embodied more so, thus exercise, manifesting as personal magnetism in increasing frequency each day on a continuous basis. As the individual embodies that state, it continues to manifest with a higher degree of fidelity and precision, and more accurately put, authentic to the individual's true way of being and true way of expression. So, when I titled the mind map from the inner fulfillment of truth, as we discussed in Sunday's video, which I'll link to in the description, where we said, true self is happiness. True self is also eternally fulfilled. And what I mean by that is the individual, the I, appears to seek for fulfillment. The individual I can seek for fulfillment in outer appearances or seek for fulfillment within. If the individual I seeks for fulfillment externally, they can form a condition that then says, if this external condition is met, then they are fulfilled. It could be what a person says. If a person appears to approve of, validate of, or confirm something visibly, and they form a belief suggesting to themselves that only if a person approves or validates or confirms, then that's an indication of fulfillment. That's a form of identification. Now, if the individual goes within 
and realizes within, regardless of appearances, that they are fulfilled by being still and feeling that fulfillment. Then, as the Bible says, they have found the promised land. They have found the kingdom of heaven which is within. They realize the source of fulfillment is within. Thus, they do not have a condition form, identification form, to an outer appearance which determines whether they are fulfilled or not. Why this is key is if one communicates with another person and looks for, during communication, signs of approval, validation, or confirmation of their inner fulfillment, and it does not appear the way they believe it should appear, then as a result of that seeking, they are no longer embodying their ideal state of consciousness. The ideal state from which everything that is considered magnetic or charismatic naturally arises from. And so what he's referring to here is the mental state, and I would like to focus on your ideal state of consciousness, which is who you truly are, fulfillment, love, happiness. You can call that true mental state if you'd like. I call it ideal state of consciousness. Now, upon seeking and finding within, the individual I discovers the promised land, finds the kingdom of heaven within, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. The individual I has found the kingdom and has realized that I and the Father are one. Thus, the individual experiences life as fulfillment wherever they are, regardless of appearances. They do not see a condition that determines they are fulfilled because they have realized that they are fulfilled. So what manifests then are the appearances of that, such as authoritative utterances, physical appearance, manner, and tones, which arise naturally from the mental state within, more and more so each day, in increasing frequency on a continuous basis. And what does it look like? Well, when others communicate with you, they may say, you have a lot of personal magnetism. You are very charismatic. Or when we see an individual that is embodying this, we say, they have authentic personal magnetism, authentic charisma. And as they continue to embody that, we witness that it multiplies more so each day. And it plays out in their relationships with other people. Personal relationships, business relationships, family relationships, everywhere they are. Even relationships with people that they meet in public. People appear to reflect our state. What does it look like? Well, from personal experience, as I discovered that I am fulfilled, I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, the identification to appearances to determine whether I am fulfilled or not, the conditions began to release. More and more so each day, the conditions continued to release. Mind purification. Mind the subconscious mind specifically, was being purified, which reflected as people saying hi to me, waving to me, coming up and talking to me when I'm in public. When I have a conversation with somebody, let's say I'm in the lineup, and I start a conversation with someone, they naturally reciprocate a harmonious conversation. And this is a big difference from when I started applying what we're discussing here. 
and you and I are no different. The true self, which we all share, fundamental reality, is fulfillment. The individual I has a mind in which the I has associated particular experiences to beliefs. These beliefs can be associated to the truth of the I being fulfilled, or they could be untrue beliefs in which the individual believes themselves to not be fulfilled, and thus it appears as the outer expressions of life, whether they be reflections of fulfillment or reflections of unfulfillment. And unfulfillment is an illusion, because where do these beliefs exist? They exist only in mind. And as a person relates with another person, they play out these subconscious beliefs and the relationships play out accordingly. So what we're interested in is true self-expression. Now, a book that articulates this very well is the book The Charisma Myth by Olivia Fox Cabane. She talks about how there are key characteristics that define someone who is magnetic in their personality or charismatic. Number one is power. Power in this particular context is not referring to force, control, or manipulating anyone or anything to generate an appearance of, which is an inauthentic appearance of power. Power is who you are. You are power. You, as in the I, are one with the Father, which is all. And as you are one with the Father, which you realize by going within. And what I mean by that is the individual I, so it says in the Bible, I and the Father are one. The individual I that appears appears perhaps to seek for external fulfillment, external signs, proof, validation, or confirmation of being fulfillment. And fulfillment being the fundamental reality from which all arise from is found within. That is why it says in the Bible, the kingdom of heaven is within. So by being still, being as you are, in moments of stillness, we release identification and we experience fulfillment. Now, as a person abides as they are, they dissolve the identification to beliefs that fulfillment is found externally. What is being proposed here is that fulfillment is generated from within and thus experienced with appearances, relationships, life experiences, etc. And if the I thinks that the outer appearance determines whether they are fulfilled or not, let's say they have a conversation with someone and the other person does not appear. And this is the key word, appear. It's an appearance. The individual is assigning the meaning to the appearance. So more accurately put, they think that the other person does not approve or validate of them. They may form a belief by thinking that if the other person behaves in a particular way, then they are not fulfilled. Now, this belief gets stored in mind, and this identification to the belief can be reactivated in a similar scenario like that or in that same relationship with that person. If they release that identification, they experience and the other person experiences with them a harmonious relationship. Because they have released identification, the I may seek for fulfillment externally. But as the I realizes that fulfillment is within, the I realizes that I and the Father are one. And being one with the fundamental cause and substance 
of the entire phenomena of life, I feels fulfilled regardless of appearances and manifests true power and that is what's being referred to. And the power looks like perhaps the individual that has released identification to the beliefs that was restricting the flow of power now appears to know what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do smoothly and harmoniously during interactions, increasing more so as they embody that. And so that's what William Walker Atkinson meant by the best suggestionists, or so they appear as suggestionists. They appear as those that are suggestive in their ways, have acquired the suggestive manner, which is developed by the exercise of authoritative utterances and physical appearance, manner, and tones arising from a reflection of the mental state within, their ideal state of consciousness, which is fulfillment. Now, it manifests as power and authentic, natural forms of authoritative utterances, physical appearance, and manner that are individualized. So we see one person that has a certain way of true self-expression manifesting as certain authoritative utterances, physical appearance, manner, and tones. And then we may see another individual who has also accepted self and is expressing true self-expression and is emanating true self-expression appearing in a different way, although from the same cause, in a different way, true self-expression forms of authoritative utterances, physical appearance, manner, and tones. This is why I recommend not looking around to see how others are doing it and form conclusions that you should do that as well. As one accepts self as fulfilled, this automatically manifests as more so each day in increasing frequency on a continuous basis as the individualized form of authoritative utterances, physical appearances, manner, and tones, which arise naturally as a reflection of the ideal mental state within. Then we have presence. Presence is being aware of the appearances. So if the individual is not seeking for approval, validation, or confirmation in the appearances as they are communicating, as they're relating with another person, they are present to the conversation. They are listening. There's a higher degree of manifestation of what we discussed recently, which I'll link to in the description, emotional intelligence. They're deeply engaged in the conversation in a very natural way. It is the natural way of being. Presence. As now is where all the power is. We say it. So within presence, now is where all the power is. And acknowledging that now is where all the power is we see a harmonious relationship manifest, which if someone observes that, they would say, you have a high degree of personal magnetism or charisma, which manifests as another attribute, she said, warmth. So she says that warmth is the goodwill we have towards other people. What this means is acknowledging that in fundamental reality, there is no other what appears to spring from fundamental reality are the individuals. I and the Father are one. And as all the individuals share the fundamental reality being, I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, the individual automatically sees fulfillment in the interaction with the other person. The only way the individual wouldn't see appearances of fulfillment in the interaction is if they are identified with a particular belief in which they believe 
that fulfillment is not now. Fulfillment is now and continues to be now as all truth is now. Truth is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Here we're speaking of fulfillment. And now is where all the power is. Now is where the power is to realize self, actualize self, and transcend self as Self-transcendence implies I and the Father are one, with one individual as well as the other individual that appears as a wonderful, harmonious relationship, which upon observation we would say, that is personal magnetism. That is charisma. So what forms these beliefs in which the individual believes that they are not fulfilled and upon believing that they are not fulfilled, appearing to restrict the flow of the power of truth, the presence of truth, the warmth of truth. Well, let's explore. So the individual I appears to be born in this world with a mind that is blank, and the individual may place in mind via thought in relation to appearances, either from the source within, from true self-acceptance and via intuition within, think for themselves in relation to appearances. Or the I looks around to what others are doing and based on appearances and experiences, forms conclusions as to what to believe and what not to believe by their thinking. This forms identification to particular beliefs in mind, mind fundamentally being pure and blank, through thinking in a particular way, either a certain way, which is truth, or a particular way that is not related to that truth forms the personal identity, the self-image, the concept of self, the worldview, the various beliefs that the I identifies with and experiences life accordingly. So, the individual I is suggesting in relation to appearances. As the individual I is aware of this phenomena that they are suggesting to themselves in relation to appearances, they begin to think more so from the premise of being fulfillment, which then releases identification to whatever kinds of beliefs they were identified with before that are not true and authentic. If they are unsure of what to believe, they can be still and know that I am. I and the Father are one. They realize that I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. As they experience this, the still small voice which speaks from clarity arises and they are able to relate to the various appearances of life accurately from the premise of being fulfilled. And this purifies the mind, releases identification to those beliefs because they know with certainty that they transcend the beliefs, number one. And number two, if the beliefs are not true and authentic, as a result of true self-acceptance, they release them. And as they release it, it automatically manifests as the authoritative utterances, physical appearance, manner, and tones, which we can also say is true power, true presence, true warmth. Now, speaking from personal experience, as well as working with thousands of others in various areas of life, with respect to charisma and personal magnetism, personal relationships, business relationships, family relationships, as a result of applying this myself over the years. 
So I recommend practicing awareness, being aware of any time you are suggesting to yourself in a way that is not true. Similar to the seven day mental diet by Emmett Fox, I'll link in the description to it. And if a thought arises to appearance from inharmonious beliefs that are not true, that are identified with in mind, the subconscious mind, if any thoughts arise that are related to those untrue beliefs, we experience, as I've been discussing, and I'll link in the description where we explored it further, life as a meditation, living meditation, as in, in relation to the appearance, you don't identify with the thought. Bring your attention back to the present moment. Engage deeply in the conversation with the other person. Release the tension, the reactivity. For example, let's say you're having a conversation with someone and you feel tense. Release that tension. It's okay to experience tension. There's nothing wrong with you. You transcend the tension. Allow the emotions to be, and the emotions are released. Also, the identification to the belief that was generating that tension is also released. If thoughts arise of disharmony in relation to the interaction with the other person, let them be. As you allow the thoughts and emotions to be, what naturally arises is the feeling of fulfillment. That feeling of fulfillment, which is the result of true self-acceptance, manifests as power, presence, warmth during the interaction. You know what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do. Everything flows naturally and happens ideally automatically as a reflection of the ideal state, as William Walker Atkinson mentioned. And so seeking fulfillment, let's explore this further. Romans 12, 2 states, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, 2, the New Living Translation, says it, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, and pleasing and perfect. So, fulfillment. I and the Father are one. Created in the perfect image of the Father is the individual I that appears, that can think, that imagines. And so, what is that I thinking? What is the I imagining? Is the I copying what appears as the behaviors and customs of the world creating belief identifications in the subconscious mind, rather than being the certain way, I am fulfilled, I am love, I am happiness, I am peace. That is how we not conform to the patterns of the world, which the patterns of the world are past beliefs playing out as theater, to reveal what has been identified with. And no shame and condemnation. Now is where all the power is. To release that identification. By being still and knowing that I am. Fulfillment. Now William Walker Atkinson talks about five classes of suggestions. In different ways you could say that the I, the individual, suggests in mind to plant the thought seeds of suggestions which form beliefs, whether they be true or untrue. And this is where we practice discernment. This is from his book, Suggestion and Autosuggestion. Number one is the suggestion of authority. He says, Suggestion by authority manifests both in the positive authoritative statements directed to the point, and also by the spoken or written statements made by those who speak or write with an air of authority. 
if we see a person that we consider to be an authoritative figure, if the individual does not discern in relation to what that individual is communicating, they may suggest to themselves particular thoughts of who they are which are not true and authentic. Whether a person appears to be authoritative or not, we are suggesting to ourselves about what they appear to say, and more accurately put, we are forming a self-image, an identity, a concept of self, a worldview in relation to the verbal, nonverbal communication, the words they say, etc. You have the ability to imagine or reimagine what they're saying in a way that is true, true self-acceptance. Number two, the suggestion of association. He says, it can be very easy for the individual to associate certain things with other things. And we will find that when one of the things is recalled, it will bring with it its associated impressions. So let's say an individual is having a conversation with another individual about money. One individual believes that money is a way of fair, harmonious, mutual exchange. The other individual is identified with a belief that says money is the cause of suffering. So when money is brought up in the conversation, the individual that assigned the meaning to money, which is an appearance, from the premise of being fulfillment, remains in their flow. The individual that assigns automatically, they react to a particular belief. We can call it a limiting belief or restrictive belief. It's identification. They identify with a particular belief of lack of fulfillment with regards to money. And during the conversation, they get out of the flow. So one individual stays in the flow. The other individual appears to not be in the flow. So what we see then is, let's say they continue that conversation. The individual that is operating from true self-acceptance eventually brings the other individual into the realization of the condition. And this might not appear as a conversation where one individual is telling the other person that they are identified with a belief. It naturally arises as a reflection of that mental state, the ideal state of consciousness, the true way of being, which is fulfillment. It naturally arises. I've seen this happen a number of times. The individual calls me back and says, you know, I had that conversation with you and we were talking about X, Y, Z. I felt insecure while having that conversation with you and I realized I was feeling insecure while having that conversation with you. Now it's cleared up. I no longer feel insecure about that and we can talk about it. And so all of that was a manifestation of true self-acceptance in relation to appearances. Having accepted self the beliefs that were once identified with were released. And through the appearance, we could say, of personal magnetism and or what William Walker Atkinson said, the authoritative utterances, physical appearances, what was said, not said, manner and tones, it naturally played out some theater in which it appears that that was the cause of the change of thinking. That was a manifestation of the change that occurred within that played out automatically as the individuals related with each other. And so others reflect our state. Number three is the suggestion of habit. He says, of course, all habits is an association with something in the past, but suggestion of habit may arise from the suggestion of authority, suggestion of association, suggestion of repetition, suggestion of imitation, or else from an original decision of the intellect resulting from correct reasoning. These are habits. Habitual thinking. Why does the individual have habitual thinking? Whether it would be true way of thinking, which manifests as authentic, natural, personal magnetism and charisma, or untrue way of thinking, because of habitual thinking in relation to appearances. Exactly, for example, if someone forms a habit of waking up at a certain time, 
or going to sleep at a certain time or whatever kind of habit they form, whether that habit may be beneficial for them or not. Now, when it comes to suggestion of habit, we are aware of the habits that are playing out. And as now is where all the power is, we can change that habit by changing how we think. Again, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world or the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Changing the way you think in relation to the appearances changes the appearances. Then we have suggestion of repetition. He says, it is the constant dripping of water wearing away the stone, a suggestion which passes you without much attention or consideration. When first made, will gain both attention and consideration from you if it be repeated sufficiently often and in the right manner. So in relation to whatever appears, information, what people say, whatever kind of information that you are appearing to consume, realize that you are suggesting what that information, what people appear to say to you, means to you. The question is, is it from the premise of fulfillment? If you suggest to yourself in relation to what appears from the premise of fulfillment, what happens is you remain fulfilled. You don't go seeking for external fulfillment. So fulfillment is the feeling of happiness and satisfaction. It's also the completion of something, like the fulfillment of a promise. All fulfillment is found within. I and the Father are one. By realizing that fulfillment is within, the individual does not seek for that fulfillment in information as it's presented. They think for themselves in relation to information, and thus they're not identifying or reacting to beliefs in relation to information. For example, on the news, the information is presented in a particular way. One individual sees the information for what it is, picks up what is relevant, and proceeds to the next thing that they do. Another individual may become identified with beliefs as a result of reacting to particular information that is being presented and identify with that belief. And if it is not from the premise of fulfillment, they further embody those beliefs and play out those beliefs in conversations with others in which then someone might look at that and say, that's not very charismatic or magnetic behavior. So what he's suggesting here is being aware of the different ways we suggest to ourselves. And if the same information appears again and again, for whatever the reason may be, you have the ability to choose whether you accept what you are relating to it, either from the premise of fulfillment or not. Now is where all the power is in relation to appearances. Then we have suggestion of invitation. He says, this form of suggestion while being in itself a distinct phase of suggestion, nevertheless has a very close relationship with the several other forms of suggestion, copying the attitudes, appearances, tones, and little personal peculiarities of people, imagining that by doing so we may absorb their qualities. We may think the thoughts of other people and share their ideas according to the same law of suggestive imitation. For example, he says the tendency of the race to get into line to follow my leader, to act like human sheep or geese, makes it easy for them to fall into the habit of accepting these suggestions. So the individual I is relating to experiences through suggestion. These suggestions, if identified with, form beliefs. These beliefs get reactivated through various appearances. So when it comes to personal magnetism, acknowledge that you are fulfilled. The true self is fulfilled. I and the Father are one. And thus, the individual does not need to seek externally for fulfillment. And as the individual does not seek externally for fulfillment, the individual has a calm presence of mind and is able to relate to information or suggest in relation to information that appears through the five senses in a way that does not form beliefs of lack of fulfillment. 
Thus, they remain fulfilled. And then what happens as they remain in that ideal state of consciousness is it appears as a charismatic or an individual with personal magnetism. And so I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, true self-acceptance, that I am, fulfillment, love, happiness, peace, bliss, manifests as true power, true presence, true warmth during interactions with people, reflecting authentic, true, personal magnetism and charisma, more so each day in increasing frequency on a continuous basis as I continue to be as I am. From true self-acceptance, manifesting true self-expression, true power, true presence, true warmth, in every interaction, easier and easier each day as I accept myself. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.